Hi everybody, it's Claire here from My Creative Spirit uh, with a design team project for Graphic 45, this handy caddy. Um, it's all decorated in the Mother Goose papers which are absolutely divine. They're beautiful colours, really pop, really vibrant and oh, there are just so many things that you can make with them. Anyway, I decided that I'd make um, just this little caddy could be used for all sorts of things and um, let me just show you we've got um, it's made of five papers and then um, the embellishments have been cut out of a, a, a sixth one so it's all made out of chipboard and black card painted with black acrylic and then um, we've got black May Arts ribbon bows and there's a tag up here and some flowers a couple of stamps and then on the front I've cut down the postcard and um, resized it so that it would fit nicely on the front of the caddy and then the sides are all quite plain inside is a really nice red spot I love that spot on <laughs> and the sides are all made out of the same papers or covered out of the same papers I and then we've got the stripes in the middle. So all um, quite detailed papers, but they all go so well together. So let me take you through how to put one together if you want to make it yourself. Let me just show you the papers. I used five papers, spot on. I love these papers. This is the most adorable collection. Um, checkers, ring around the roses. I'm reading them upside down, so I do apologise. <laughs> um, playful postage and sunshine stripe so those those are the papers and then i also used some 300 gsm black card that's a4 size in the uk and 11 and a quarter inches by eight and a quarter if you're outside of the uk and then two pieces of two millimeter chipboard actually i probably used three three or four but this is the chipboard, the 2mm chipboard, so it's quite sturdy and uh, makes a really nice, strong project. So let's just move those out of the way. So the first thing I did was to cut out all of my chipboard pieces. So I've got the base, which is 10 inches by 6.5 and then the side pieces are three inches high by ten inches and the end pieces are three inches by six and a half and then the middle piece here I've already painted it but the middle piece I cut out of a piece of chipboard that was ten, me ten inches long I cut it at six inches high the side straight bits are three inches and then I took a large round plate and just drew myself a nice arch and then to cut out the oval for the handle I used my X-cut oval cutter Let's just get it out of the really handy little things these are if you can get them out of the packaging come on that's it nice little cutter really easy to use um, I went round two or three times and then just went over it with a sharp knife just to cut out that oval and I used the inside for the template and then I've painted it black both sides around the handle and I've started to put the strips onto it so I've cut card strips two of these 10 inches long by two inches wide scored at one inch 
and I've stuck them onto both sides of that chipboard so that the bottom is flat, ready to start to assemble the basket. Should we call it a basket? I don't know what to call it. Caddy, kiddie caddy, toy caddy. And now we're going to start to put it together. So I'm going to build it up, um, paint it when I'm finished, just touch up any black pieces and then add the papers. So the first thing I'm going to do is to stick that handle on. And to give myself a guide, I've scored down the middle of this bottom piece of chipboard at three and a quarter inches in. And then I'm going to take my glue. Is it going to work? Hopefully. Come on, glue. I love this glue. The collar glue. Because it spreads it as well and it does stick quite quickly. So I'm just going to put the glue either side of that score line. on its last legs. Okay. I might have to start using the tacky glue. And then I'm going to line up my handle over that score line and stick it down. And you won't see these black pieces once the cad is put together and we'll touch up any other little bits of chipboard as we go. So that's the base and the handle stuck on and now I'm going to put um, the two sides on and I'm going to be sticking them from the inside and you'll see why in a minute. So I've got some more black strips these are one inch strips and they've been scored at half an inch and I haven't cut them so let's just trim them down to 10 inches with little scissors. Just trim one and then I can cut the other one, same size. Um, that one. Okay, so now I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to stick the strips on like that to the base first. So again, smooth the glue down. I like using the tacky glue because it gives you time just to manoeuvre and get your pieces into place before it dries. So let's just scrape that off there. Smooth that down. And then I'm going to put the glue onto the chipboard piece this side. If when you've cut your chipboard you've got raggedy edges, like I have here, you can always um, sand them with a sanding block. Okay, so now I'm just matching that piece up and putting it up right up against the bottom edge of the base. So butting it up and then just making sure that that piece, that hinge, is stuck on, but there is room for it just to flop out slightly. I'm just going to work that so that the glue starts to take all the way down, like that, and then I'm going to do the other side. Put it on my 
like that first, wet it up against the edge, and to make sure that it's stuck down nicely, let's just move that out of the way, and then take the other side piece of chipboard and come on, glue, keep going. And then butt that one up against the bottom piece of chipboard, get the edges exact, and then just work that hinge onto the chipboard so that it sticks firmly. It's going to be covered with paper anyway. Oops, it's falling off. That's not good. Let's just hold it for a minute. That's it. So they just flop out. And now we're going to turn it round and do the same with the side pieces. So they fit on like that. For the end pieces, I'm going to stick the hinge underneath first and then attach that to the top, like that. So I'm going to use just I'll have to go back to my normal tacky glue. I think this one's on its last legs as well. I might have to get another one. So that one I'm going to put underneath. Line up the hole. Six and a half inches long that one is. And then I'm just going to fit that chipboard piece over the top and then glue this side. So I'm going to put my tacky glue along here. Just straighten that up. Just pull that out a little bit. then put that up, press it down and then that should stay stuck. Let's just give it another press down. And then turn it round and do the other side. That one's too short. So these pieces are six and a half by, do I say six and a half by an inch, and scored at half an inch. So let's just drop that one over the top. Press it down and take the other side piece, line the two ends up, just left a little gap so that it does actually fold up. So that's about an eighth of an inch. So leave that to dry and once that's dry then we'll come back 
and start to put the papers on um, and just paint around these edges. So now that's completely dry, I'm just going to turn it over and just add two more sort of black supports. So those are one inch strips just over those bottom edges and I'm just going to stick those on with tacky glue. I didn't tell you, the um, black paint I was using is the Indigo Blue Giso Good. And it's a really nice, it's a gesso, but it's a really nice matte. It's a really nice matte look to your project. Okay. So let's just trim that down a little bit. Should be 10 inches long. I've cut them a little bit too big. Apologies for my caggy handedness. <laughs> It's not good being left-handed. So just make sure that one's well stuck on and then we'll turn it over and do the other one. Oh, it's coming off. Just going to hold it for a minute so that it takes on the bottom. And then while that's taking, I'll just put the glue on the other one. Had a complete glue disaster, had to resort to a new bottle. Okay. So I'll turn it round and put that strip that side. Let's turn it round that way. Push it down on the bottom. And then trim off any sticky out bits that you've got. I've just got one here. And then, oh, it's coming off again. So it's all stuck down now. Next thing I'm going to do is to put some black strips, just some um, decorative strips around the top edges. And I've used my Martha Punch, I mean, I can't say <laughs> Martha Punch, you can see Martha Stewart Punch. It's the nice arched edge punch. And I've just cut, lost it, four strips 
two at six and a half inches and two at ten inches. So again, I'm going to stick those to the outside edges with some tacky glue. So I'll just put those on. And I'm just lining up the top set of holes so that they just peep over the top of the edge. You see, just like that. So let's do the others. And the strips were one inches deep. I just cut some black strips of card one inch deep and then um, run them through the cutter. But I thought that gave it a pretty edge. long one. Let's just smooth that glue down. There's loads on here. Too much. Mm -hmm. Now I'm completely covered. <laughs> you're not enjoying yourself if you're not completely covered in glue and paint. Are you so? Right, let's just line that up. The nice thing about this PVA glue is it dries clear, so you can't see it. Right, last one. Not so much glue this time. Turn it around there. Line up the dots and press it down. And now we're ready to start covering with our papers. So there it is, it's looking quite nice already and uh, it's feeling quite sturdy. That handle won't come out. Big, really good little storage um, holder for your craft room as well. Put um, stains and inks and bottles, mists. What else do we use? Oh, hundreds of things. Right, papers. First of all, I took, um, I'll tell you which one it is. Let's just have a look. The Sunshine Stripe and made two pieces using that centre handle as a template. Um, so I'm just going to ink the edges. I'm using walnut stain. Um, huh. I'm not going to ink the edges because my tool has got no foam on it. So let's just get a foam. Hold on. on now we can ink the edges so I'm just going to just whiz around both of these that just gets rid of that white um, cut edge Oops. this is not a good tool it's um, it's lost its velcro so the foam doesn't like to stick. <laughs> Let's use it without. Okay. So that's one. And again, I'm going to use tacky glue um, just to stick this down. So I'm going to put it all around the edges. And around the handle. I don't want that bit to come off. And then all down here. And then I always like to do a bit of a, do some Cornelli work. It's a cake decorating term. Um, 
very bad Cornelli work, <laughs> all the way over and that will stop the paper from bubbling up and then I'm just going to smooth that just with my finger all around the edge so that it doesn't ooze out and then make sure that it's right up to the edge around the handle bit because you don't want that to come off either. So there it is, now we're going to stick it in place. So I have cut it slightly smaller than um, the handle itself, but only slightly. So let me just turn that round and get it in place. And then I'll show you. Smooth it all over and then make sure it's well stuck down around the handle area. So it's looking good already. Not too fiddly either. Let's just make sure it's really well stuck. And now I'm just going to do the same with the other side, but let's get another another tool. Excuse my squishy chair. <laughs> okay, so ink around the edges. Quick whiz. around the hole in the middle. Sometimes it's easier to come up from the bottom and ink through something. And then let's put the glue on. Go all the way around here. And the handle and some decorative Cornelli work. I'm not pressing too hard on the glue, just a trace, really, um, because you don't want to over-wet it, but you want it to stick, so. Smooth it down. Really nice sturdy papers, Graphic 45 papers, for doing um, home decor pieces. do hold the shape and uh, you can put quite a lot on them before they start to buckle. Okay, so piece number two on. Let's get the glue off my fingers before we start. Okay, I'm just going to smooth that down, move it into place. I'll just turn it round again so that I get it straight. and smooth it all over. And that's it, that's the handle done. So that looks really good, doesn't it? Really cheery papers. Um, now the next thing is to put the papers on the inside. So I've cut used the red spotty. I absolutely adore this one. I'm a real spotty stripey person and I'm just drawn to anything that is spots and stripes. So this one is called Spot On. So what I've done is cut all my pieces a quarter of an inch smaller than the chipboard pieces. So I'm just going to piece them and put them in the right place because the two that cover here are slightly bigger. They are three and three quarter, uh, three and a quarter inches. Is that right? It's just yeah. And they fit quite snugly 
like that. So instantly it comes to life. They're really vibrant colours, they're popping out of the page and looking really gorgeous on the black background. So the next thing to do is just ink the edges once you've put all of your pieces out. And we'll ink and stick as we go. Exactly the same, a little bit all the way around the edge. Squiggles across the middle. Smooth corners. It's a real messy business. But it is much quicker than using tape. And I do find um, that with the exception of the score tape, uh, the tapes do tend to come unstuck. Uh, especially if you are um, taking your projects or your projects are in a hot environment or under lights, hot lights, they do come undone. Whereas the tacky glue, once it's down, that's it, it's down. So we'll just work around and put all of our pieces on. Which won't take us a minute. In fact, I'm going to ink them all and then we'll stick them. So let me do that and then I'll be back. So there it is, all of the red spotty papers on and then I've started to put, let me tell you which one this is, beautiful flowers, it's ring around the roses, around the sides. So we've got spotty inside and then the ring around the roses around the sides. So I'm just going to add the last piece to the end here and again these are cut a quarter of an inch smaller oops, than the chipboard was so for the side pieces that's six and a half the chipboard was six and a half by three so the papers are two and three quarters by six and a quarter so that's the last one stuck on. So there we have our caddy all ready to start to, um, we're going to tie the corners together. So what I've done is just punch a hole, I don't know if you can see, in either corner. I'm just going to do this one here just with my crocodile and the larger hole. So in about don't have to be exact, but about a quarter of an inch from the top edge and the side, if you can see. <laughs> mm. If you want to be precise, you can measure it. But I just tend to eyeball things myself. And then we're going to put some ribbon through the holes just to tie these um, corners together. A really handy tip is I'm always scratching around for a needle and I can never push the ribbon through the holes. So if I've got an off cut of paper, and this one was about a quarter of an inch, I folded it in half and then folded it in half that way. And then it works just like a hair grip. Do you call them hair grips in the USA? I don't know. Um, put your ribbon through and then this is just big enough to go through the hole. Just straighten up my paper. Give it a wiggle. Should work. That's it. So through one side and through the other. Should have done the other way around. But I'm not going to cut the ribbon until I've pulled it through the hole and I'm happy that I've got the right length, so I think my homemade paper clip is, oh you could use a paper clip, my homemade needle is going to rip, so let's fold it again and thread it through. Put 
bit of wiggle. That's it. And then pull all of that through. This is silk ribbon. So I'm going to have the corners about that far apart and tie a bow. It's about an inch, I think. Let's tie a nice bow. This is all very caggy handed as I'm doing it facing the camera. Let me turn it round and do it properly. There we go. And also it's difficult to see because it's black. It's in there somewhere. Come on, Luke. The loop. So. Pull the ends down. Just keep pulling it until you're happy with how your loops look. Let's fluff them out a bit. And let's get some sharp scissors, as mine are not sharp. Let's grab those. My little scissors are not sharp. So I'm just going to trim that, pull it nice and tight because I don't want it to come undone. Pull those loops out. Pull that down. And then fold it in half. And we have some pointy ends. And oh, these aren't very sharp either. Trim it back. So let's just do that one. And that's it, that ties the corner together. So I'm just going to do that with the other f four, no, three, and <laughs> then I'll be back. So that's it, all the bows are done. So here they are. How lovely does that look? I'm really, really pleased with it. And uh, just to finish it off, I've added a tag. And the tag was cut out of the new Sizzix Elise die, just the small one. And then I've cut a chipboard flower, put some spotty paper on it first, stuck it together and then cut it out using a Sizzix die. And then just mounted it on um, onto the tag with a couple of the little stamps from the collection. So not too fussy, I think the papers are coloured enough without adding too much detail but a really handy caddy to put the craft supplies in, have it standing in your craft room as a storage container, um, you could use it to put kiddies things in, in a kiddies room, so many different options um, and you can make it in all the different colourways. So I hope you've enjoyed that um, tutorial. And have fun if you make one yourself. Thanks for watching.